What's up, everybody? We had a press conference today, emergency press conference by Becky Hill. And we knew it could only really be one of a few things. Everybody expected her to resign. Uh, there had already been inklings that she was not going to come back. She was not going to run again. So that wouldn't have been a surprise. That wouldn't have been, uh, that wouldn't have necessitated her calling a press conference. Um, so she did resign, but she said a whole lot more. And so did her lawyer. And they told us the reason why she resigned. And we're going to discuss whether or not we believe it. And then people pointed me to my buddy, Joel over at surviving the survivor. Um, they do a lot of good work over there, especially on the Adelson case the Dan Markell case over in Tallahassee, uh, my former law professor over there and on Murdoch, they've done a lot of work on as well. That, um, and a lot of other things. That's just where I've kind of seen some of their work. And they had her co-author of her book, Becky Hill's co-author on, and people said, you got to hear what he says at the 21 minute mark. So we are going to also listen to that and we're going to watch it on Joel's channel. People said he's cool with it. If he's not, hopefully he lets me know um, and I won't do it again, but people told me he'd be cool with it. And uh, so we're just going to give a shout to his channel. Uh, we're going to play his stream of the press conference. And then we are going to listen to um, what the co-author had to say here together. Make sure you guys hit that like button if you haven't already. Um, and uh, subscribe to our page. Subscribe to Surviving the Survivor uh, page as well. Let me see if I can. So you can see Joel there is in the top left. It's his channel. Um, and we've been on there before as well. A lot of you guys came over for that stream for uh, the Dan Markell, Charlie Adelson case. Um, but let's get into it. That's Becky Hill's lawyer right next to her, a taller guy. And so he's going to make some statements. Becky Hill's going to make some statements. She's going to resign. We're going to hear why, what that means uh, going forward. Throw your questions in the chat or the comment section as we go. And I will try to be in the live chat tonight or get to them eventually. Um, but here we go. We have a press conference. We're live. Ford legal director at the South Carolina Victim Assistance Network. Let's listen in. Are you ready? This is attorney Justin Good morning, Bamberg. everybody. Um, my name is Justin Bamberg. Myself, along with Will Lewis, our counsel for uh, Miss Becky Hill, the Colleton County Clerk of Court. Uh, today will be brief, but today's important. Um, obviously, over the last few months, uh, Miss Hill has really wanted to address her constituents um, obviously, with things that were going on, um, she has certain rights and, and she's got to uh, protect. Her. Like the right to remain silent, I think is what he means. Um, and she's protecting her rights to remain silent while there are criminal investigations going on. And he wants to make sure everybody understands that. And even though she wanted to address her constituents, sometimes you can't rightfully so. And it is your constitutional right. But I think that's what he's uh, inferring here herself most of which came under the advice of counsel once um, again another little hint that it's the right to remain silent is her lawyer advisor of that right and that i think has been lost on a lot of people with everything that's been going on is that as clerk of court uh you do have a constituency the residents here in Carlton county and today could have occurred uh hiding behind a computer screen or hiding behind her lawyers and uh, Miss Hill was committed to that not happening. So one thing I don't love is like to one in one breath say, you know, she has the right to remain silent. She has rights. She's exercised those rights under advice of counsel, but she didn't want to hide behind a computer screen or behind her lawyer. So you're kind of throwing shade at something that is appropriate. And we all advise our clients of this at different times. But then to say that's hiding behind your lawyer or a computer screen, it's kind of just a weird statement to have a juxtaposition against what you just said, basically that. Um, she has certain rights. That's why she hasn't spoken before, but right now she's being brave and speaking. It's not about being brave. It's not about hiding. It's purely about your rights and you should exercise your rights and lawyers do the right thing by advising their clients of those rights. So I didn't think he necessarily needed to say she was hiding behind a computer screen or behind her lawyers or anything. But I think what they're trying to do is say, show how far above and beyond she's going by coming out and making a public statement when she doesn't have to. Um, and I stand with her and, uh, also respect her very much. Uh, for being here today. Uh, so without further ado, I'll turn the floor over to Ms. Becky Hill. Good morning, everyone. It has been my honor and pleasure to serve as your Colleton County Clerk of Court over these past four years. The clerk's office has provided many services to the, Coll to the citizens of Colleton County. The Colleton County Clerk's Office is proud of our services and the significant impacts we have made in the history of South Carolina. 
Here at the Colleton County Courthouse, you will find a full service passport office with certified agents ready to help you, as well as notary services and e-filing that has streamlined our civil processes. Another significant impact in our clerk's office was in 2023, when we had to manage one of the biggest trials in South Carolina history. Our small town came together and made everyone proud. Managing a trial was such a- Still the shtick is, we did such a great job when the world was watching on this big trial and they're so proud of what they did. They're, you know, biggest achievement in Colleton County history basically was because of this clerk of court and her team. It's kind of wild to hear her double down on that again. Importance to the people of South Carolina, as well as of the national and international media, interest and public scrutiny, and has caused me to reflect upon decisions involving my stay in the office of the clerk of court. If you think she's going to talk about reflection on her decisions in the case and what she did with the jurors or anything like that, you're wrong. That's not where she's going. And so after much reflection, I have decided that it is best not to run again for re-election. I will now be able to focus on being a wife, a mother, and grandmother to my two grand boys, and will be spending. She says she's not going to run again for re-election. Now, what that would mean is she could serve out the rest of her term, but that's not, in fact, what's going to happen. Spending time with the people who mean the most to me. With the upcoming election, I wanted to ensure that I provided ample time for other Republican candidates who may be interested in pursuing this position. I want to publicly thank all of the citizens of Colleton County who voted for me, who have supported me, and who have stood by me. I also want to take just a moment to extend heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of a very, very kind professional educator here in Colleton County who has departed this life and gone on to the other life that she has. And that is the family of Debbie Price. And so today I just want to take a few seconds of silence just to remember her and her family and friends. I also want to thank my amazing staff who work in the clerk of court's office for the wonderful job that they have done and that they will continue to do. We are fortunate to have strong leadership within our office, and I am proud to say that our clerk's office will seamlessly move forward. I look forward to all of the future holds and will fondly remember the true amazing friendships that I have made while serving the incredible people of Colleton County. And so, as we fix our eyes forward, I would like to announce also that my resignation as clerk of court will be effective immediately. She says it with a smile again, as if it's a good thing. And she gave us her reasons why, because she wants to spend time with her family. Um, but then her resignation, right? Not running for re-election is not a resignation. Resignation means you quit and you stop now and it is effective immediately. So she's out. She's done. Somebody takes over as of today. She can no longer do her job now that she has resigned. Effective immediately. I think there's only a week left or something before the, uh, uh, election. So her lawyer, I think is going to talk a little bit more about that, but again, it has to do with family. We'll hear her lawyer adamantly deny that it has anything to do with any investigations ethics wise or from sled, but very interesting timing, especially in light of what we're going to learn from her co-author in a few minutes. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I do have in my hand, uh, a signed copy of Ms. Hill's official resignation. Uh, that will be forwarded to the uh, governor's office, uh, Governor Henry McMaster's office uh, later today. Um, I've served in the South Carolina State House for over a decade now. Uh, when we run as elected officials in this state, we run publicly. Um, our lives become public, we serve publicly, and it's only fitting, and, and I respect Ms. Hill very much, uh, that the conclusion of her service also happens publicly. Um, I'll be taking a couple of questions, but I do want to say one thing because I know that there are speculation and rumors 
Well, having lived in small town South Carolina my entire life, I can see where people's minds may run after an announcement such as this. So let me be extremely clear. Today is not in response whatsoever to anything going on with any investigation or, or anything of that nature. Okay, and I'm going to say that. You don't need to be from a small town in South Carolina for your mind to run there. And we'll talk about some of the reasons our minds might run there. One more time. Today is not in response to any new development of some investigation or anything like that. Uh, today is about the people of Colleton County. Uh, there is still another week um, available for filing for the clerk of court's office. Um, and it is what it is. Uh, if Ms. Hill had stayed in office, um, the people of Collison County would be the ones who uh, get distracted to a certain degree uh, because there are a number of candidates running for clerk of court. Uh, those candidates have different things that they, different platforms that they want to campaign on. Um, and it would be inevitable that if Becky was still serving while those candidates were campaigning, um, every time they mention something, every time there's an article, every time there's a forum and candidates are discussing uh, the future that they seek to create for uh, the courthouse behind us, uh, there'll be a degree of a cloud over that because it'll be talking about the sitting clerk, et cetera. So this decision was made wholeheartedly by Ms. Hill uh, for the benefit uh, and, and to the benefit of the citizens of Collison County. Uh, we will not address any investigation stuff, whether it be SLED or state ethics or anything like that. Uh, she did this for the people. She did this press conference and public announcement for the people. She's a public servant. So please, I know it's tough. I can see some of the faces out there. No questions about any of that. Uh, if you do ask, I'm going to dodge it uh, because we're not going to comment on that. We're not going to detract. I appreciate his upfrontness. Uh, from the from the positive nature of today, the bittersweet positive nature of today, uh, with that. So with I don't understand said, why I don't understand what the positive nature is of this. Somebody resigning with all of this cloud above them just because they say they want to spend more time with family and and friends or whatever, like a week before the elections, is hardly hardly something that's positive. It's we'll, we'll wait till after this part is done before we talk about why people's minds might run to other reasons for her resignation. Um. I would like to acknowledge behind us faithful members of the clerk of court's office. Uh, these are dedicated employees to the people of Colleton County. Um, and we want to thank them for everything that they uh, have been doing, everything that they will continue to do. It is a good sh uh, show of support for her that they all showed up for this. Uh, so that we can continue to make Colleton County as great uh, as it is. Uh, so with that said, happy to take any questions. Um, I mean, I, we respect Justice Toll, and uh, she is a, a longtime jurist in this state. I don't think you'll find any lawyer that doesn't respect her, um, and we respect her decision in court. Uh, we respect her review of things and uh, the comments that she made. Uh, she is former Chief Justice Toll. Uh, so at present, it's kind of tough for them to respect the comments that she made because she basically hammered Becky Hill. Uh, with the resignation of Ms. Hill, uh, the deputy clerk will uh, step in immediately to to effectively run the clerk's office. Um, and we anticipate that at some point in the immediate future, Governor McMaster uh, may appoint a formal clerk of court. Uh, to step in and actually be uh, formally in charge. But for right now, uh, and that's one thing uh, that, that took some timeline and everything up to make sure uh, that with this decision, the clerk's office could continue to run effectively, efficiently uh, for litigants and for the citizens. So uh, there will be no gaps in service whatsoever to the people of Collins County. Gary Hale, Jr., in fact, he's standing right behind me. Gary, are you, running, are you planning to run for the first office? 
Um, I'm, <coughs> I'm currently here and I'm, I'm on the county's time and I can't discuss that. Thank you. What would you say? Sounds like a yes. Uh, what was the deciding factor in this announcement? Without a doubt, my grandchildren. If you have grandchildren, you know. You know. So you're saying with, your, your resignation had nothing to do at all with Like, I think she's had grandchildren for a little while, too. Like, I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I don't like to be spoken to in a way where you're saying I'm reading into things when I'm telling you, no, this is really what it looks like. And it's very obvious why it looks like this. And for you to tell me that right now, amidst everything that's going on and everything that's happened over the last year, that you just decided now to resign right before the re-election for your grandchildren. Investigation. No, sir. What? 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 Did this have no, you're really telling me this had nothing to do with the investigation. And she said, no, sir. They said they weren't going to <coughs> address that, but she did address it. She said, no, sir. The resignation is strictly about the people of Colleton. Um, and again, we're not going to- What does that mean? The people of Colleton. Again, they don't want to distract from the election. They want other candidates to have the opportunity to talk without this being a cloud overhanging. But it's like, okay. Get into uh, any of the investigation stuff and all that as things are still open. Uh, but the primary and the main focus of uh, today is what is in the best interest of the constituency, the, the public. Um, and this ended up being the, the, out of the options that were on the table, for example, uh, just not running again and staying in office through the election, et cetera. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that ran the risk of, uh, things or impeding the public's ability to, uh, get digest information from candidates about what they want to offer. Um, so that's why, that's why the decision was made. We'll take one more question. Yes, sir. Um, I believe I, I would have to double, double check, uh, but I believe the governor would have the ability to make an appointment. Um, I don't know that there would be a special election. However, that would not that wouldn't be out of the question. Um, that question would probably be more uh, directed for state ele uh, state election commission. Um, and if there is a special election, of course, uh, that will be announced um, by the, the powers that be in the elections office. Um, and then folks will campaign and um, the result will be the result. And then you will have your normal election in November. Um, so thank you all so very much. All right. So that's the end of uh, Becky Hill's part of the press conference. So why would our minds go there? Number one, it's a lot better to resign than be forced out of office by one of two investigations by the ethics commission or law enforcement. Number two, if she did run for reelection, would she win? If she lost, that would also be more embarrassing and basically be an indictment where the people don't believe her or don't trust her or don't want her anymore. Also worse than just publicly resigning like this, uh, being a public official when the crap hits the fan worse than resigning. Um, if she retires and resigns now, basically any ethics reprimand or, some kind of sanction by them doesn't really matter. Doesn't really affect her life. Doesn't affect her career. Doesn't affect her going forward at all. If she was running for re-election or if she was the clerk, that would be a much bigger deal. She could be suspended, removed from office. Now, criminal charges are what they are. And that's a different discussion. And that's going to hurt if it happens, no matter where she is, what she's doing, retired or not, grandma or not. So to me, it's a very interesting set of circumstances. And it really only points to one answer as to why she did this right now. I see no other reason than things are getting tighter, breathing down her neck. She didn't like the publicity. She wanted to get out of the public eye. She didn't want to be in public office when it all hit the fan because she was a grandma before she could have retired long before spent more time with her grandkids than she's going to be able to spend now. Does she know criminal charges are coming? Does she want to spend time with her grandkids before the criminal charges come? I don't know, but I, I feel like it felt a little like, you know, Amber Heard or somebody where they're telling you something where you're like, this just doesn't seem true. I'm sorry. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but this just doesn't seem true.
And <clears throat> from my perspective, I'll take them at their word and it is what it is. And I hope she enjoys her time with her family, but it's tough to not see all the connections. But guess what? There's more. There's more about this timing. And we're going to hear it from the co-author of her book. Towards the end of the trial, the book came out. Hind Tough interviews with you, because when I was looking at the chat, a lot of people say in the chat are asking, doesn't Neil burden some of this criticism because you co-authored this book? What do you say to those people who say that you should be taking some of the criticism? Well, it's fair. I mean, the timing of when our book came out, hindsight being 2020, could we have waited? Um, certainly. Um, I, you know, we were, we're storytellers, my wife and I, and Melissa met her towards the end. And he's kind of backing off. This isn't the, the punchline we're getting there, but I thought this was interesting too. When I heard it that, you know, in hindsight, maybe the timing wasn't as good and they didn't know as private citizens, what she couldn't, couldn't do as a public official. So when she offers access, what are they supposed to do? It's basically what he says. End of the trial, something, you know, just the, the, the gods connected us all together. She was interested in writing a book. We were introduced. We fast-tracked it. Um, and um, I, I have to tell you, because uh, I always believe in full disclosure, and we've, we've put out a little, a little note because I don't want to hide anything. I was interviewed by SLED on Friday. Hmm. And the the focus of what their questions were, were when exactly with the dates and the times that uh, Becky spoke to groups, Becky did interviews on television, and Becky did book signings. So they want to know, they interviewed him, and they want to know, what are the dates and times she did this work with you? Maybe she's lying. Maybe they don't have the information and they're trying to get it from another source to prove that what she did was illegal or theft or on county time or whatever it was, committing perjury maybe if she made statements under oath. We don't know at this point, but we know they are actively doing interviews with people directly involved with Becky Hill in this book, in the allegations with her as clerk. I'm going to back it up so we can listen to it again. And then that, I think they dig in a little bit more, but let's hear what he talks about and how he was just interviewed recently little a little note because i don't want to hide anything i was interviewed by sled on friday hmm. and the the focus of what their questions were were when exactly with the dates and the times that uh, becky spoke to groups becky did interviews on television and becky did book signings so sled is interviewing him asking these questions specifically about becky hill that's what we call an active and ongoing investigation. And they honed in on that. They're very, very persistent about that. And we, we don't have anything to hide. We were part in setting up some of that, but we're private citizens and private business people. And we were under the impression that uh, she's allowed to do that. And I'm not so sure. And, uh, and I don't know if that has anything to do with the timing of today. I mean, I have no idea, but very interesting that we were interviewed uh, on Friday, very specifically uh, about that. Um, so, and Neil, have have you um, released that information prior to just now that you were interviewed by Sled? Um, I think, um, I, I, as you may know from the last time, we we're putting out a, a totally separate book. Well, it picks up from the story. So he's promoting yet another book and a new book on this situation, which is interesting. With, with Becky called Trial Watchers. And the person that I'm working on it with, uh, Mike Pachenik, um, was working on a release today to, to sort of share the fact that we were interviewed by SLED. I, I, you might want to check or have, uh, I guess, uh, Stephen check whether he's received a press release because it should be about out by now well uh you're hearing it probably here first uh yeah on sts i definitely heard it first on sts that uh neil gordon was just interviewed by sled uh and this was just on friday today's monday so only the weekend has uh passed us by sarah ford you're the lawyer so very interesting very interesting news broken by sts that um, 
they are still interviewing people involved with Becky Hill, specifically focused on Becky Hill, the timing of her doing things, where she was doing things, how she was doing things on county time. So I'm interested to hear how this continues to go. This is far from over. This is just another piece of the puzzle that is part of the downfall of Becky Hill. So it seems resigning publicly in what they called a bittersweet positive day or something. So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree that it was positive? Am I looking too far into it thinking that this has to do with the investigations? Um, even if it's just an ancillary reason that she doesn't want this all to happen while she's a public official or she was afraid of getting removed or losing reelection or whatever it may be to me feels like, and sure sounds like, and smells like it had something to do with the Murdoch situation, but maybe I'm wrong. Can't wait to read what you guys think. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hit that like button if you guys haven't already and make sure you subscribe to our page. Um, that's all I got for this one. Till next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, The Lawyer You Know.